Today we're going to talk about lenses and starting to do some uh, terminology and assign some conventions around lenses, uh, much as we did with mirrors. And we're going to use some of the tools of, of what we did with mirrors that also carry over into lenses. Lenses, of course, are made of some sort of dense material, like glass or plastic. And as a result of it being a denser than air material, they will refract light as light passes through from some object passing through the lens over to the other side. And as you probably know, lenses have surfaces that are curved in some way, either outward like this one or inward like that one. If they're curved outward, they're called a convex lens. If they're curved inward, they're called a concave lens. And the same rules or principles as we developed for a spherical refracting surface apply to lenses. The only added uh, information here now is that there are two surfaces. The light is coming from some object, and we'll continue to work from left to right here. Uh, the light is coming from some object, passes through one surface, and refracts right here, and then passes through the lens itself, gets to the back surface, and then refracts again. And if you mentally were to draw a little perpendicular, it would look something like this. And you would notice that the light is refracting from a very large angle to a relatively small angle off the perpendicular. And the perpendicular looks like this on this side. The light is refracting from a very small angle over to a very large angle. And that's just compatible with our picture from a while ago, where this is a, sm a small index relatively close to 1. This will be some large index, maybe 1.3 for glass. And this is a small index again. So light is doing more or less what we anticipate. And we don't want to have to go through all the uh, applications of Snell's law in order to predict what happens to light on the other surface of the lens, or the other side of the lens, excuse me. Uh, we want to borrow as much of the tools that we developed for mirrors and spherical refracting surfaces as we have before. So the first step will be that we will need to define the virtual side and the real side for a lens. And I've drawn those conventions here. We continue to work from le left to right. So the object will be placed here. And we'll imagine that the light is propagating off to the right. You know, if there's light coming in from some distant source reflecting off of that object and they're going in all different directions, then the light will go off to the right as it goes into the lens. And remember that. Light should not reflect off of a lens. It refracts, and so it's transmitting. And so our anticipation is the light ends up over on the right-hand side of the lens. And that's why we call that the real side. The virtual side is not where the light should end up at the end of this process. And that's uh, the region where we designate the V side. Just like we did for mirrors, we will define numbers to be positive or negative in this problem, depending on whether they are connected with the V side or the R side. And the only difference will be that the, the location of the V side and the R side are different for lenses as they are for mirrors. Remember that um, these two things were flipped for mirrors, because we do expect the light to end over on the left side of the mirror if it started on the left side of the mirror. So let's go through the sign conventions. Um, we will have a, s a curved surface right here. And this is called the first surface. We call it that because that's the first surface that the light goes through. Then we must define a radius of curvature for that first surface. And we call that R1. R1 is actually a positive number in this case because its center of curvature is right there. And so the center of curvature is the point from which we could draw a bunch of radii and have it sweep out this curved surface. Since the center of curvature is on the real side, R1 in our convention system uh, for signs, positive and negative, R1 comes out to be a positive number. R2 is connected with the second surface. And it's a little counterintuitive in this particular case here. But remember that the second surface would be the second surface that the light passes through chronologically as it's going from the l object over to some uh, remote location. In this case, R2 is a negative number because the center of curvature for this second surface is over on the V side. And the center of curvature is that place from which we would draw 
uh, of set of radii, equal radii, and sweep out the second of these two surfaces. Since C2 is on the V side, R2 is the negative number. That's the particular set of signs that would come out for a, a so-called convex lens, ones that bulge out like this. Notice, however, that for a concave lens, R1 is the radius of curvature connected with the first surface that the light goes through. C1, as a result, is over on the V side, and it's the location from which you would sweep out a bunch of radii and, and map out the first surface. And since C1 is on the V side, R1 is negative. That's the exact opposite of our previous case. Since C2 is on the R real side, or the R side, R2 is a positive number. And so these two things have flipped sign compared to a convex lens. So that's an introduction to the signs. I just want us to remember that everything connected with the V side is going to be a negative number. Everything connected with the R side is a positive number. Of course, the object distance, the distance from where the actual object is located to the lens is always considered a positive number. As with mirrors, there are just two equations for us to learn. And that's a wonderful thing, because uh, it's hard for us to remember lots and lots of equations. The two equations are the same one for mirrors as for it was for the case for mirrors, 1 over p plus 1 over i is 1 over f. This is an equation that relates the location of the object at rel relative to the mirror, so the so-called object distance. The image distance, in other words, where is the image located relative to, excuse me, to the, to the lens, and the focal length. And as with mirrors, we will have something called the focal length for a lens. The focal length for a, mirror, uh, for a lens is a little bit more complicated than it is for a mirror, and I will not derive this formula, but merely quote it for you. 1 over the focal length is related to the index of refraction for the lens minus 1. This 1 comes from the fact that the, the it's assumed that the index refraction of the air around it is 1. If we were embedding this lens in water, this 1 would change to some other number, like it would be the index of refraction of water. So it's n minus 1 multiplied by this parenthetical expression here, 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2. And we must be careful to always use the correct sign for R1 and the correct sign for R2. So if we can remember these two equations, we'll be able to do most everything we need to do with lenses.